Uh, namaste viewers, I'm Vibhuti Jha, this is Jaipur Dialogue USA and you are talking to me today. Uh, thank you very much for your feedback and support. I am I'm very much encouraged for your viewership and the feedback that you give. Thank you. Uh, today I wanted to talk about returning to the topic of Rahul Gandhi, the leader of opposition party. People call him LOP or LOO, depending on whatever it is. But what is important here is to talk about why is he insisting on doing the caste census reservation joker, the plan that he has, that he will expand the reservation formula to include everybody in the process. And also the element that he's talking about redistribution of wealth. For that, he wants to do the caste war. So there is a very nice phrase in Hindi. They say, you know, you're looking at one place, aiming for something else. But remember one thing, you know, you have seen Rahul Gandhi's, what he's doing. So what I'm going to say to you is, based on what he has said and what he's doing, I do not know what he does behind the curtain or in his room. I know what he does in public. That's what you have to bear in mind. Begin to keep your eyes open and ears sharp to read between the lines what is this guy actually trying to do so remember one thing this is a, something which i'm drawing a parallel because i'm living in america so i have the view what i see here happening and i see what is happening there so just keep this background in mind when i'm talking to you my thoughts are like this india and the united states are the world's two most promising prominent democracies. This is important to bear in mind. India, I repeat, India and the United States are the two most prominent democracies of the world. And when you want to weaken something, all you need to do is to hit at the strongest elements of a society or a community. The elements that have attacking United States and India are the same the unholy cabal, unholy alliance of the elitist billionaires who want to run the world in their way. And they are using the, the Islamists, Marxists, socialists, extreme liberals, and what have you, as their foot soldiers to create chaos. That's my premise on which I'm basing my conversation. I'm looking at the United States. What has been happening for the last few years? The Democratic Party is totally dominated by those, the groups of people I mentioned to you. They want to weaken the police. They want to weak, they introduced transgenderism, LGBTQ in the US military. Military is weakened, the police force is weakened, defunding police is weakened, is happening in America. Consequently, consequently, the entire society is in turmoil. They have brought in so many immigrants that there is a lawlessness. They liberalized that even if you commit a theft of $900 million, you are not charged. The police don't catch them anymore here. They go to a swanky shop, they, they take away on the cart expensive items and they walk away. The pharmacies and others do not even object. That's the game plan which Rahul has for India. And that's where it is important to bear in mind that. When he talks about the caste census, he wants to weaken the morale of the Indian army. That's what he's trying to do. When, and the Indian army has a glorious tradition. So you look at those people with deep respect because they, they sacrifice their lives. They're willing to give up their lives to save the country. And we have fought many wars. Rahul Gandhi wants to weaken the fabric of India. That's the reason why he keeps telling, oh, Indian army to Chinese ke saath mein mar khati hai. He has no hesitation in doing that. And his entire plan is to weaken India. To weaken India, you look at everything that can divide the country. Caste, unfortunately, is India's albatross. Because everybody is inundated submerged, pressured into believing 
what the caste thing, what caste are you? Let me tell you something very interesting. Since 1991 that I have come to America, nobody has asked my caste, nor have I asked anybody his caste in America. Nobody does that. Every Indian has prospered here because there is no caste-based pressure. We came, we worked hard, each according to how much he put in, and he got the rewards of his work. Simple as that. And then you can add, Jonathi Hamari Kismat. You can add that element, each one according. Not everybody who came to America became a billionaire. That will not happen either. But you are relatively successful because there is ease of doing business. Now, what is Rahul Gandhi doing? His party has been the ruling party of the country for how long? Do I have to tell you the number? 1947 onwards till 1971, a little bit of a disturbance of Janta Party experiment. And then you know it has been UPA, NDA and all that. But they have run the country virtually for over 60 years in one combination or the other. So when he talks about caste thing, he must be asked this question and you must ask this question. Who aggravated the caste issue? Who has been playing this caste game? This is very important to understand. Why is this man trying to do that? Because he knows that it is on his own, he can never become the prime minister of the country. His party will never come back to the golden era of their rule that they had experienced from Nehru to Rajiv Gandhi, not happening again, not under his leadership. I have met several Congress people who are my friends. They said, if only Gandhi family relinquished their role of the leadership of Congress party, there will be many supporters who will return, but they will not because this family doesn't want anything to do. And to come back to power, to divide the country, he's again making the casting an even more serious effort. And then it happens. Think about minimum income plan. We will do this for you and that for you. They have been promising the moon to every Indian. Where is the money going to come from? Where is the money going to come from? He understands that. And therefore, he is now telling Indian uh, foreigners not to invest in the country. This is a very serious issue, very, very serious issue. He wants to weaken India vis-a-vis -vis China because Indian army is now giving a crack to Chinese, beat them up, they're standing up to that. China can't take India for granted anymore because of the military strength of the Indian army. And the readiness and preparedness with the road and infrastructure that leads to that. So his, his aim is introduce caste and weaken the army, because then it will be caste-based reservation in armed forces as well. Remember, they tried it once, and the military shut it down, that this particular thing will not work, because military has different ethos and different agenda, because that requires preparation, preparedness, performance, and commitment to be ready to die. That's you see, isn't it crazy that military people have to be permanently ready to go into war, to sacrifice lives, to save the country? Rahul Gandhi's dangerous idea is to weaken the country, the reservation thing. He has also talked about reservation in private sector. Think about what is going to happen. If private sector operates on profitability, creating reserves and surplus, right? I'll give you an example. This is a real example. When I go to India, I always hire a taxi for the whole day. There was one moment where I had Mr. Mandal driving me, driving me around. We began to talk. Mandalji was very happy because he was from Bihar and I was from Bihar. So he was very excited to have a Bihari coming from America and doing business in India. I asked him, this is a pointer to everybody. I asked him, how many cars do you have? He said, I have six. Prior to that, I had asked him, how will Bihar become a better state? He said, Waha aur bhi arakshan chahiye. Then I asked him, you have become a punjipati. From one car to six cars, you are a punjipati now. You are no longer a mandal. 
in the, in the, in the car sense of the term. And I said to him, who have you given the cars to drive? The five people who are driving your other five cars, do that, those cars are your property, right? Who are you giving the license to driving, driving facility to? Who have you hired as a driver? The guy who has a good driving record, who has a good license, and who manages your car well, takes care of the car, doesn't do any hanky-panky in the car, right? He said, yes, sir. I said, or will you give it to another mandal who doesn't know have the proper license, who has a lot of accident records? Who will you give the car to? He said, you are right. I never thought about it from that point of view. I'm glad that I have become a Punjipati. Think about it. This is, this is a conversation I had in Mumbai a few years ago. And then Mandalji told me, hey, today you opened my eyes to recognizing the fact that I am now a Punjipati. I have six cars and I use good people to run my car who have valid license and everything else. That's what is important. It's a very simple example. But it's a very profound example, in my opinion, for you to understand that reservation has a limitation. Reservation needs it. We need reservation to protect people who are very vulnerable. You do not lower the standards of reservation because of reservation. You know, I remember very clearly Chirag Paswan is a wonderful young man coming up in politics there. Chirag Paswan's father, Mr. Ram Vilas Paswan. I met him in New York long, uh, in the consulate. And I was introduced to him as a fellow Bihari. And those days, the school I went to was Netarhat Government School in the village of Netarhat in Ranchi, in, in, now Jharkhand. Point was that those days, Lalu Yadav, because of Yadavization plan of Netarhat, was, had cut off the funding to Netarhat. Guess what? The school had the maximum beneficiaries from economically poor group of people, <clears throat> you know, because the, the, the fee were paid by according to parents' income. The school was totally funded by the government, government of Bihar. So when you are stopping the funding, you are hurting the very people you are claiming to serve. That's called the bankruptcy of ideas. That's why I told Ram Bilas Paswanji, Ki those don't stop the funding of the school, because that school serves people who are poor, downtrodden. A Jha Mishra can be a poor guy as well. And that's where the whole scheme was. And, you know, usual reservation quota. So my point is very simple here. When Rahul Gandhi talks about reservation, caste-based, census, and redistribution of wealth, that means he's trying to destroy entrepreneurship, innovation ability of the country and productivity of the country. That's very critical to figure that out. Countries that are prosperous in the world, they are not living the socialist life or a communist life. Let's be very clear. China has also grown because they adopted capitalist practices to supply goods and services to the world around. This is very critical to understand that the socialist experiment from the economic point of view has globally failed. And if Rahul Gandhi wants to kill the entrepreneurial ability and skills of Indian people, that's what he will do, caste. That's what he will do, caste. Create reservation for jobs where productivity falls, profitability falls, then what happens? Stock market goes down. Companies are not doing well. This is the important element that we have to remember. What exactly is Rahul Gandhi's agenda? And, you know, I wanted to made a note of it and I wanted to share that with you. He is using the regional languages as the dividing element. Regional languages as the dividing element. He is, he is casting doubt on country as a whole. He lied about that Sikhs can't wear the pagadi and the, and the uh, kada in India lied about. And I'm glad that the good Sikhs in India and here, they have told them to shut up. They have invited them to challenge Rahul Gandhi to talk about it in debate. And one group in the United States has asked for Sam Petroda's resignation as well. 
So this is very important how the fakery of the news, fakery of the thought is spread with venom to the gullible, to people who are not quite aware of it. And that's where he's playing with the emotion of the country, of the people, you and I. You have to expose Rahul Gandhi. He is the ultimate villain of the peace. I won't call him evil yet, uh, but villain of the peace. He wants to divide the country and he's using every toolkit to divide the country even more. Right? This is what is important. Remember some of the things that Rahul Gandhi's party did? You know, cast element in military to lie away. Uske baad, you know, how they turn it. The whole thing is the loss of leadership to India. The whole world is looking towards India as a leadership role. Unfortunately for Rahul Gandhi, it is Modi's term to, to enjoy all of it. And he's doing a good job. You may be dissatisfied one way or the other, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that how India is being looked upon by the world. And Rahul Gandhi can't handle the truth. And therefore, he indulges in lies to make fool of you and I. When he goes off the script, you saw what happened in Georgetown. A young man asked the question, do you need Indi, Indi, uh, alliance to use after India party that you call it? He didn't get it. He blamed B BJP for calling it Indi alliance. But the last word is alliance, right? How he flubbed. He doesn't have the intellect to understand the question. The moment you take him off script, you know what happens. It's time for all of us to begin taking Rahul Gandhi off script, ask him questions. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Satyame Vijayate. For truth to triumph, we all have to stand together. Thank you for watching.